All right, we'll now take questions for Kevin Durant. Get going. Kevin, obviously, uh, over here, Kevin, sorry. Dwayne Reagan, Arizona uh, Republic. I don't recognize you without the uh, <laughs> Without the mask. mask. Right, 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 right. I was wearing it like a Welcome helmet, back, right? Brother. Thank you, sir. I <laughs> want to first ask you about oh, a training camp. Like, this is obviously you came with the team and it was during the season. How big is the training camp for you? To, and what things do you usually gain from a training camp that helps you uh, throughout the course of a season? Uh, training is always important, becoming a great athlete. I think as much as you can train, uh, the, the better you'll be, the more preparation you have, the better you'll be when the games come around. And, and it's just a certain feeling around this time of like just development and building and chemistry. All that stuff matters around this time earlier in the season like this. So it's good to have an opportunity to go through that with these guys. Curious when you see all the trades that are made with, with Dane being the latest one and obviously you guys made a trade with DeAndre. Is this more than norm throughout your career where it be this late in a, before the start of a season with these major trades? This is absolutely normal. It's the NBA. I mean, it's been happening for years on years on years. So, yeah, it's pretty normal to me. Lastly, when you just look at the, the, the roster itself and, and Evan Bradley, and uh, is Bradley someone that you've thought about playing with? Because obviously him, with him being in D.C. and probably maybe kept an eye on him a little bit or, or, or no? Uh, yeah, you always keep an eye on everybody. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say if somebody I was, I was thinking about playing with, but uh, always been a fan of Brad. He played in my hometown with the Wizards his whole career. So I uh, followed his career and knew how, how great he was as a player. And, Whenever you get the opportunity to play with somebody like that, you just uh, get excited, you know, because we're going to sharpen each other every day. You know, you get to be around a bright basketball mind like that. That's only going to make me better as a player. Kevin, Kellen Olsen, Arizona Sports. Good to see you again to start off with the important stuff. Commanders got to go for two yesterday, right? They got two. Oh. But more importantly, we beat the Cardinals this year. <laughs> I didn't realize I set myself up there. I thought I was doing that, and then you turned to. it right Somebody back else on asked me. asked me about my commanders back there, and uh, he was an a Arizona fan. I had to let him know, too. You know that's my team. Come on, man. I've told you this. Okay. <laughs> uh, to talk about basketball again, you and Book spent a lot of time together over the summer. You guys are kindred spirits in a way where I'm sure the, the way you guys approach basketball, he was there right away, but how was it to build up that bond with him over the summer? Well, it's great to spend time with your teammates. Huh? Book is somebody that I really admire, and I love being around. Um, not just on the basketball court, but just you know, off the court as well. Um, so it was good to build, you know, as teammates. You know, we've been around and hung around each other before, as uh, as opponents. But to 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 hang with you know each other as teammates was a different feeling. So I'm looking forward to continue to build with Book on and off the floor as we go through this journey together. Hey, Kevin Joe Borgay, good to see you. Uh, when you look at yourself, Book, and Bradley Beal, three guys that can put the ball in the hole but can also play on or off the ball, how exciting is that as someone who is one of the most versatile players in the game to be able to be surrounded by guys that can kind of do that same thing? Yeah, being around talent is uh, what, uh, what this game is always about, putting yourself in position to be around the best of the best coaches, players. Um, I think that's... Uh, you know, it's important for my development as a player to constantly be around greats. And these guys uh, portrayed that in this league for a long time. So uh, guys that can do multiple things with the basketball, without the basketball on both ends of the floor is only going to make me better as a player. So, um, and it starts in practice. You know, those guys have a, a high standard for themselves in practice along with myself. So we just got to look forward. I'm looking forward to maintaining that level every single day. I know it's hard, but uh, I'm looking forward to the journey of doing it. Hey, Kevin, uh, David Brandt from the AP. You're a guy who's obviously had a couple of major injuries throughout your career. What, what do you think of the NBA cracking down on players resting during the season, different things like that? What, what, where do you stand in that whole debate? Um, I mean, the NBA going to do what they're going to do. They're going to implement rules they want to implement. It's on us to just abide by them, to be honest. Like, I mean, I'm sure guys are going uh, – like I said, I guess we just got to abide by it, to be honest. It is what it is. Uh, speaking of the wear and tear of basketball on your body, um, the Olympics next summer, would you be interested in, in being on the U.S. team if they asked you? I will play in the Olympics next year. Hey, Kevin. Luis Torres, nice kicks over here. Um, obviously, you're on your 16th signature shoe. 
Devin Booker's on his first. What were kind of your initial reactions of seeing the Nike Book one for the first time? Just happy for Book. That's a huge, huge accomplishment. Nike's the, you can say, rival with Apple is the biggest co company in the world, you know. So to have be a signature athlete at one of the biggest companies in the world means a lot. So I'm happy for Book. It's always been a lifelong dream of every, every player that had their own shoe. Um, so I'm um, happy for him. And, you know, it's just the start of something, a brand that's just going to continue to blossom from here. He's so creative and so innovative that, you know, it's just only the start for him. So I'm looking forward to the next iteration of books as well. Kevin, Doug Haller with The Athletic right here. In your experience, you, you were talking about roster turnover being the norm in the NBA. How long does it take to kind of build chemistry once uh, you guys start camp and enter the season? I don't want to put a number or a date or a time period on it. It just kind of naturally happens. Uh, either it happens or it doesn't, you know. Um, and I think uh, when you got guys who want to win, a coaching staff who loves to teach the game of basketball, it happened organically. When it happens, I'm sure we'll all we'll all just feel it. I mean, everybody who's following the Suns will just understand what that is. Um, but I can't put like a timetable on it. Hey, Kevin, all the way in the back at the cameras. Uh, Eli Avgabai, Sports 360 AZ. We spoke with Coach Vogel about it a little bit, but what have conversations been like with him as far as you and the other stars handling that leadership on the court and in the locker room, if there has been a conversation? Um, we don't rarely talk about leadership because, you know, we, when you got guys that work hard and, and, be their, and you know, provide their best every single day, that just rubs off on everybody else. So it's not a conversation you got to have about of appointing us as captains or leaders. It just happens by just the work ethic we put in and the love that we have for the game every single day. That is shine brighter than us talking about anything. Hey, Kevin, it's Dean Scott, Arizona Republic. I'm wondering about how you feel uh, with this new team. So many you know, guys are playing together for the first time, but you have some familiarity with you two coming over. How important is that, and how do you feel it impact the team? I mean, it's good to be familiar with the guys in the league. Regardless of me, you, or the, you to play together, I knew who he was. I know what he brings to the table, as along with all of my other teammates now, just from playing against them and following, them, following the game. It's always going to be about the reps you get in with one another on the floor. That's going to be the most important telltale sign of who we are as a group. And that usually takes a while to kind of see what, what everybody's roles is. So, But I'm looking forward to the journey. In the back, Kevin, Jay Russell of Burn City Sports back here. Wanted to ask you, you guys have to deal with some big bigs in the West, talking about Jokic, Sabonis with the Kings, Anthony Davis with the Lakers. After the trade, you guys have some pretty good bigs now. How do you think defensively you guys are going to do? And then with you being a power forward, are you going to be good with doing a lot of help defensive stuff as well? Because it's really tough out there. Yeah, I mean, the bigs you named, I don't think anybody can stop those guys, no matter who you bring on your team, you know. So, I mean, um, those, those type of guys provide such a tough problem for every team in the league. Um, and my job is to do whatever is required, you know, whatever coach needs me to do, I'll do. Uh, Kevin, Shane Yellen, Ford Sports. Just curious, you know, 15 years in, being one of the best scorers ever. 16. 16 with the injury, you're correct. Um, what does a player with your stature look to improve on or add in the offseason training, if anything? Well, that's about maintaining. Um, I always want to just continue to maintain what I have and just just play as much as I can. To be honest, as you get older, it's just all about just getting as many reps in as you can. I mean, new philosophies on the game, I'll learn those throughout, you know, as I play and if I want to add a couple new moves, I just try to maintain the fundamentals and then I could build on everything from there. Take three more for Kevin. Kevin, Brandon Brown from the Phoenix Business Journal. Um, you've been in the Valley for a little bit now and you're also known as one of the more savvy uh, businessmen within the NBA, doing deals and stuff off the court. In the Phoenix area, have you been, uh, uh, you know, been approached? Have you been looking into any type of businesses? And then maybe within the your teammates, you know, you have a lot of new teammates. Are you guys talking about business deals? What is maybe advice do you have for some of the younger players? Uh, I, I wouldn't say I've started anything here in Phoenix yet, but who knows what will happen in the future. And I think that's always a conversation amongst the locker room and on what guys are doing off the floor. I think that's what brings us together as a team as well. So, um, 
You know, we all ask each other questions on what they have, what we got going on at the moment, and, and so just hearing everybody's perspectives on what you know what their life is like, their brands are like off the floor is always fun. You know, so you know, guys are doing some cool things in the league nowadays, and you know, uh, there's definitely opportunities for all of us to work together in that space. Kevin, Greg Moore, Arizona Republic, to your left. What can you tell your teammates about what it's going to be like to be on a super team? Right, you've done this before, where teams haven't gotten a lot of attention in your career, and then teams that have gotten a lot of attention in your career. I think this Phoenix roster is going to be more scrutinized than we're used to around here. What can you tell your teammates about what that's going to be like? Um, well, the expectations people put on us really don't mean anything uh, unless we you know, it don't mean nothing into, into, unless we put the work in every single day. That's the most important thing. The people in that building. Who are consistently in that building with us every day um, are the voices that we should listen to. I mean, obviously, it's hard to get away from the opinions of everybody and how they feel about our team. Um, but at the end of the day, when you realize that the guys that you're going to war with every day are the people that you see every day, and you tend to focus on them, and everything is pretty smooth from there. So expectations are going to be you know, coming from everybody, but it is what it is. That's a part of the business. As much as you can focus on who's in the building, the better for us. Dave, last one. Uh, Kevin, over here, Dave King with SB Nation, right side. About, I know you've touched on this a couple of times, but specifically to the 65 game rule to make it all NBA or MVP consideration or all defense consideration, guys in your position who are, you, like you said, you want to get every rep you can, but it's a tough game, it's a tough business. Is there a worry about your legacies uh, at stake here with the uh, not being able to be on, on consideration for those awards? I don't know, I, don't, I can't speak for everybody, but um, I don't, I don't, short answer would be no, I don't think. I think guys are just focused on every day, trying to be there every single day and whatever happens, happens. Um, some unfortunate things happen throughout a season where you might not be able to play because of injury, but you tend to just focus on each and every day and your legacy is what it is. What, le what is legacy to be on? What is the, the, the opinions from all you guys or what you say about our careers after it's done or the accolades that we accumulate? Uh, I mean, if you plan for just that reason, then you know, so I think guys are just um, going to focus on day-to-day -day and see what happens. Thank you, Kevin.